So the first life stressful event she went to, went through, is what I call the one night stand. So in 2 Samuel 11, verse 1, in the spring at the time when kings go off to war, David sent Joab out with the king's men and the whole Israelite army. They destroyed the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah, but David remained in Jerusalem. One evening, David got up from his bed and walked around on the roof of the palace. From the roof, he saw a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful. Well, he thought maybe here's another wife I can add to my collection. And David sent someone to find out about her. Hey, is she available? She's single, free? The man said, oh, no, David, she's Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. You know, Uriah is one of your best friends. He's one of the 31 mighty men that serve you. But that doesn't stop David. Verse 4, then David sent messengers to get her. She came to him, and he slept with her. And then she goes back to her house. Now, David made a mistake here, by the way. We, we already know this. David made the mistake of watching and looking at a woman who's bathing on another roof. He, he did not follow the advice of the scripture, which is to run. Now, I'm reading a book. I, I, I don't know how I, I got it at a garage sale somewhere just recently. And it's a book towards men, how to protect your marriage. And it talks in there, when it comes to sexual immorality, the book says the advice from God is to run. Many sins, we are to stand firm, not to run. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You know, learn to stand up to truth and speak it out and, and be bold. But then when, when the Bible talks about sexual immorality, God has a different piece of advice. He's like, look, I know your spirit is willing. I know that you believe you're strong, you're filled with the Holy Spirit, but the flesh is weak. So I recommend you run from sexual immorality. 1 Corinthians six eighteen: flee from sexual immorality. Run from it. When David was walking, taking a, a you know, a midnight sc scroll, stroll, stroll, on his rooftop, and, and when he, as soon as he saw Bathsheba bathing, he should have went in a jogging mode and run to the other side of the house. So you need to run. This is Proverbs 7, 15 to 25. Most, most cheating occurs when men go on a business trip away from their wives. And then there's some woman at the hotel, the convention, whatever. Most adultery occurs under that situation. This, it reminds me of Proverbs 7. So I, so I came out, this is the woman speaking, to meet you. I looked for you and I found you. I've covered my bed with colored linens from Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, alloys, and cinnamon. Come, let's drink deeply of love till the morning. Let's enjoy ourselves with love. My husband's not at home. He's gone on a long journey with persuasive words. She led him astray. She seduced him with her smooth talk. All at once, he followed her like an ox going to the slaughter, like a deer stepping on a noose. Look, man. If you're, if you're on the convention and some woman comes up to you and, and isn't asking for directions, you begin, she's got some seductive words. What do you do? Run. You run. You go. You leave her in the dust. You, you take off. Listen, when you're on your computer and suddenly an image pops up that is inappropriate, what do you do? Slam that computer shut and run. Tell your wife, hey, something appeared on my computer. Get rid of it. You're watching TV and all of a sudden... Every so often. Now, I got, my wife and I have computer blocks, so that rarely happened. It happened a lot more when I had the six kids at home. And that's why we got this very sophisticated computer block, so I don't have to worry about that. But every so often, we're watching a show on TV that's from the 70s, because we get Ruko for the free stuff. But every so often, something shows up, and my wife and I, as fast as we can, we run to the control and shut the thing off. Run, men. Think of Joseph in the Bible when Potiphar's wife came. 
run, okay? David didn't run. And he winds up having a one-night affair with Bathsheba. It looks like it's only one night. And she goes back home. There's three different types of affairs. Most affairs, like 80% of affairs, are a one-night thing. And everyone feels horrible afterwards. Some affairs last a couple of months, and then some affairs go a long time and wind up going into marriage. When people have, especially Christians, and I know this happens because over 40 years, I've had lots of, usually men, come to my office crying about how stupid they were because they didn't run. So they classify that having that one-night affair as post-infidelity stress disorder. Many people experience, in fact, they just had someone not that long ago. They experience horrible grief and shame. Many people go home and cry and get depressed. Panic, shame, self-loathing, shaking, and so forth. Now, the good news is that this is 80% of affairs. It's a one-time thing. And after a man does it, usually, or a woman, usually they never do it again. The one time it's like, how could, oh, man, then that's when you realize you should have run. That's when you realize, I thought I was strong spiritual and could kind of flirt and play with it, only to find out you went down. So it usually cures them, and they usually never do it again. Bathsheba and David had that one-night affair. Bathsheba went home, and, and, and King David, I mean, these are people that love God. King David hangs out at, the, at church with, with the Lord. They, they, and they both went home, and I'm sure they were like, ah, how stupid. Why did I go? Why did I do that? Ah, this is, this is horrible, and... Um, you know, and you, that's why you don't hear them hooking up again or getting back like, oh, this is, you could see Bathsheba. She's young and she's just, oh, why did I do that? I got a husband. I got a good husband. Why did I? Oh, by the way, a lot of people will say, well, Bathsheba had no choice in the matter um, because it was a power, a power differential. King David was so powerful and charismatic, she had no choice but to give in. The problem with that, it reminds me of Monica Lewinsky and President, former President Clinton. The problem with that is men, fathers, you need to teach your daughters to be able to run so that when your daughters go off to college at 18 years old and some crazy professor that seems like he's so full of wisdom and, and, and is this amazing teacher that just does your, your daughters like, wow, I've never seen a teacher like this. And that man decides to target your daughter for one of his side activities. Hopefully you've taught your daughter to run to report him, to turn him in. When your daughter or son get a job at 22 years old and, and they're in a big company and the CEO who's wealthy and powerful and dynamic decides to target your 22-year-old for one of his conquests, hopefully you've taught your kids how to run. Now, most parents probably never talk to their kids like that, but I know it happens all the time. So I figure I may as well do it. So... I think Bathsheba is down in the dumps, as well as David, as well as every Christian who does this. Do you know any Christian who walks with God like David and Bathsheba did that commits adultery and is joyful and happy? I haven't met them when they come to my office. 